All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, one of my Minecraft character rigs. I just finished a newer one. Uh, this is the one I used previously. Uh, so I figured I'm not going to really need this anymore. So I'll go ahead and release it to whoever wants to use it uh, for their own stuff. All right, so quick overview of the rig. Um, I keep two things, two things important. Well, two big things that are important to me are few and compact controls. You see there aren't too many controls um, going on here. It's not a super complicated rig. I made it a pretty pretty far way back, uh, but I've making, been making improvements and adding things onto it over time. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty simple rig, but it's it's pretty solid. It's gotten the job done thus far. Um, but yeah, I, I when I was first making it, I wanted to keep the controls very compact, so I had fewer things to animate. Um, fewer things to keep track of and it just makes things uh, go faster and not as get not as complicated with a bunch of different objects to worry about king and stuff um, also everything's named this is kind of just a little not really a big deal probably for most people but for me I everything is named very exact and I can just glance at the name and know exactly what it is. And with other rigs I've looked at, they're like huge names as a result of like exporting and importing and then duplicating and then copying, pasting stuff. And you just get these huge names of nonsense. And it's just that for me would drive me crazy. All right, so we'll start with uh, the, these layers here real quick. Um, I can toggle the skin here, toggle the bones, uh, and toggle the visibility on the controls as well. Bones I'll usually keep off. You don't need to see those. Skin, I'll keep referenced. You don't want to be selecting that while you're animating. And controls, I'll toggle off if I want to do a play blast and I would just and I don't want the controls distracting me. I just want to look at the movement. I can quickly turn those off. Um, let's see here. Uh, so configuring the look of the character, which is probably pretty important. Um, there are two materials you need to really worry about. There's a skin Lambert here, which you can use to change out the skin because obviously you don't want to use Steve all the time. Uh, but just by changing this file path, or you can browse to whatever skin you want. And the way the UVs are laid out, you should be able to use any Minecraft skin you find, plug it right in, and it should um, appear exactly how it would in-game. Uh, the other material you need to worry about is the pupil blend, and this just controls the color of the pupils. So you can do that, saturate them, and whatever. Um, there's also this controller here, which uh, is your head attributes. So if there's a few things on here. If you just want to see the character with no face, you don't want any of the geometry for the eyes or the mouth. You just want to see the face as it would show up on the skin. You can toggle face off and you'll get that. Um, we also have where you can, we, I don't know why I said we. <laughs> it's set up so you can toggle the eyes, uh, eyebrows, oops, that was the teeth, eyebrows um, and teeth, which you can't really see. Um, unless I open the mouth here, um, psh, gosh, all over the place. Yeah, teeth. And you'll notice the controls disappear with um, as I toggle these off, so they don't they aren't distracting since they're not necessary anymore, uh, which keeps things a little bit cleaner. Uh, and then lastly, the most important thing for me, at least, this is the thing I use for pretty much every rig, is the hats. So if your character has glasses or a hat, obviously, um, hood or something, you toggle that on, and it'll show up here. Uh, right now, if you if I open up the skin here, uh, let me do that. Okay, um, it it shows whatever is here. So this is where your skin would normally have glasses, a hat, whatever. Um, right now, it's just this weird checkerboard thing. Just so when I was setting up the UVs, I could see what I was doing. Um, but yeah, so if your character has something like that, it'll show up there, and that's kind of convenient. So you don't have to make a new object and everything. Um, mouth controls. Uh, here on the right side, everything's labeled pretty clearly. Uh, you can move the jaw around. Um, I should mention uh, all, this is all intended. If you watch any of my videos, you'll see the smooth edges on all the characters. If I, I, it's the rig was intended to be in smooth mesh mode all the time. If you're not a fan of the rounded edges like that, you can keep it off. It should look fine. The face um, may do a little some weird stuff with like inner penetration and stuff. Um, what I would recommend is beveling the edges just around the head here, and then if you turn smooth mesh on, you'll still have sharp edges on the on the head, uh, but you'll get the face to look proper. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I would suggest if you're a fan of or if you want to keep it hard edged. Um, so yeah, jaw moves it up and down. Um, 
you can rotate it to widen or narrow the mouth. All the controls that are in the star shape means they have extra attributes or they can be rotated. Um, for other things, the circle ones just are meant to be moved around. Uh, so yeah, there's the jaw, expressions, as I mentioned, I like compact controls, so all the expressions here are in one control. Uh, if I want them to smile, I can move it up, frown, move it down, um, do stuff in between, I can move it side to side and up and down and get some craziness, let me close this a little bit, um, and get half smiles and whatever. And then if I rotate it, since it's in the uh, star shape, I can rotate it and get a open mouth frown or an open mouth smile. Good stuff. Uh, Alright, and then the offset here, this offsets the mouth, but it's not an absolute offset. It's more of a push, as if you're like using your lips to push your mouth around, so you can push this up, push it down, or if you want to do like a whisper thing, like psh, 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 you can do that. Um, you may recognize this, the lip quiver from the from um, Tucker's death animation with Syndicate and his lip quiver, something like this, and then this was animated to move up and down really fast. I don't know if I can do it fast enough by hand. Yeah, that's that's how that shape was formed. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, and then lastly, the teeth here. Um, the teeth will stay just on the edge of the rim of the mouth, so if I move the jaw up and down, you probably know this earlier, but the teeth will kind of stay with it. If you need to offset the teeth, that's what these are for. This is the bottom row, this is the top row. Um, and the controls are mirrored, so if you have them both selected, and you move one up, the other will move the opposite. So I can cl teeth clench without having to move them uh, one at a time. And this can save you a few seconds, and if you do a bunch of that, it'll save a considerable amount of time in the end. Um, a lot of the controls are mirrored, which I'll point out as I go along. If you want that to work properly, you need to make sure you're in the object uh, you're moving along the object's axis and not the world axis because moving along the world axis would do that which is not what you want. You want to be in object mode so you get that mirrored thing going. Uh, eyebrows, these are pretty intuitive. Um, each circle kind of moves that region of the eyebrows so if I move this one around it moves the center around, this one moves the edge around uh, pretty obvious. It may look kind of the weird. These are as I mentioned before, are intended to be in smooth mesh mode, in which case uh, that looks as it should. Um, and again, these are mirrored, so let me set this back to zero. If I grab one from each side and I move them, they'll stay opposite of each other, and you can keep the eyebrows mirrored a little bit easier if you need to. If I select multiple, do that. Ooh. <laughs> anyway, uh, eyes here, you can have them look around. All the eye controls are in this one controller here. Um, less things to animate time saved. Uh, you can rotate it to dilate the pupils. There's a few extra attributes here. Left and right blink. Um, you don't edit, you don't modify these by moving anything. You just select them and if you middle mouse click and then drag left to right you can um, slide those around and you can have them blink. Uh, likewise eye expression so it can be kind of startled or something, I don't know, petrified, I don't know, whatever, or angry. And then eye size, oops, again. eye size, you can bulgy eye or kind of squinty eye. Um, and yeah, that does it for the face. Uh, there is a face cam, which I forgot to go over. Um, this camera here, if you go panel, perspective, face cam. Um, if Usually you'll do face animation after all the body parts are animated and stuff. So the character is probably moving around, the head's moving around. And you may have to keep repositioning the perspective camera to be able to access the face controls easily. So basically this camera will always stay in the same position. So if I rotate the head like this, uh, you'll notice the camera will stay in the same position and crazy stuff's going on. Um, but I always use this, I always look through this camera when I'm animating the face. Um, as I just showed, head controller here, uh, torso bending and stuff here. Whoa. Uh, you got these torso tweaks so I can kind of uh, do little sub tweaking I guess um, for the shoulders and then there's one for the pelvics, pelvis, is it pelvis? Yeah pelvis, whatever, um, pelvis thrust and whatever. Uh, let's see we have FK controls for the arms and hold on. As I was saying, um, er, yeah so 
these are FK controls for the arms, so and these are mirrored, so if we rotate this one, uh, rotate the arm, this rotates the elbow, pretty intuitive here, and uh, if you select both of them and rotate them together, they'll do the exact opposite of each other. Um, we can switch into IK mode if we grab the root controller here, and I'm sure you're familiar with the root controller moving around the center of mass. Um, there's an attribute here called arm IK blend. We set this to one, we get the IK controls, and we can do that. And there's an attribute on each one called twist, so you can twist the arm as needed. And again, these are mirrored, so if you want to keep them symmetrical, it's easy to. Isn't that great? Yay! <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Feet. These are IK. Um, I, I don't. I've never really had to use FK for feet, so there's no switch in there. Um, they're in IK all the time. But again, these are mirrored, so I can keep them uh, opposite of each other if I need to. With ease, rotating them, I can. Uh, if you need to like rotate the knee or whatever, let me pull them up a little bit so you can see. Do some of that or whatever. There's a few attributes. Foot roll for important for taking or animating footsteps, uh, and then twist. And this does is basically it twists the knee, but the ankle stays in place. Oh, whoops, wrong thing. There we go. So I can do that. I never really had to use that, but it's there, you know, in case you do. I don't know, whatever. All right, lastly, we have the master control, which is probably pretty obvious what this does. Whoa, what a surprise. Moves the character around, scale the character, rotate the character as needed. Um, and yeah, that pretty much covers it for all the controls here. Any questions you have, just leave a comment. I'll likely answer it. Um, yeah, download link is in the description. I don't think I mentioned that yet. Uh, yeah, if you're interested in the rig, click on that, download it, use it, make cool stuff. If you do make something cool, tweet it at me. My Twitter is also in the description uh, so I can see it. Um, and yeah, that that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. And bye.